Uh, uh, hello, everyone. I'm Teru Akisiyama from uh, Tokyo Institute of Technology. And first of all, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, uh, nice uh, uh, conference. And uh, having, uh, uh, I, I guess, uh, the, the topic of my talk is a bit uh, off the main topic of the conference, but I hope uh, you understand uh, my talk. And my talk is based on my uh, recent paper whose information is uh, shown at the bottom, bottom of, it, of this slide. Okay, so let me start. So uh, as uh, everybody knows, uh, in 2015, the gravitational waves uh, were have been uh, detected for the first time. And uh, the gravitational wave astronomy uh, finally started. And so it's a very historical moment in the history of our history. And the gravitational wave uh, detectors have been uh, continuously uh, detecting black hole uh, gravitational waves from black hole black hole mergers and as of now about uh, 100 black hole black hole mergers have been detected and uh, until we have uh, detected the gravitational waves from black hole mergers uh, we didn't uh, expect uh, so many uh, black hole black hole mergers occurring in the universe so we the gravitational wave astronomy taught us that uh, our universe is populated with uh, so many uh, black holes so we now know that uh, many black holes exist in the universe. And we are, we are at the beginning, just at the beginning of the gravitational wave astronomy. Sorry. And uh, the next decades will be the golden age of gravitational wave astronomy because of the progress of the gravitational wave detectors. For instance, the current, current detectors are planned to be upgraded to have uh, better sensitivities and in addition to that, uh, looking at uh, further future, uh, for instance, Cosmic Explorer in the US and the Einstein Telescope in the Europe are planned. And if such super detectors are become available, then it is expected that uh, about uh, 10,000 black hole black hole mergers will be observed per month. Um, um, black hole mergers and we, we will learn a lot about our universe. So the uh, experiment is very promising in the future. On the theory side, uh, the detection of the gravitational waves from the black hole mergers brought us a new question that em emerged after 2016. The question is, what is the origin of the black hole binaries? And uh, it's, uh, the discussing uh, this topic is a very hot topic in the in astrophysics and the cosmology now and uh, the detected uh, black hole binaries have some non-trivial features for instance uh, the general relativity tells us that in order for two uh, massive uh, black holes to merge within the age of the universe these two black holes must be close at a distance about one-fifth of the distance between the sun and the earth. And it's non-trivial how such a massive black hole started from such a tightly bound system. So we have to clarify uh, this. And there are a couple of uh, theoretical models that, that are already uh, proposed. The one is this uh, classic uh, field binary scenario where the system starts from the two main sequence stars and the heavier, heavier one first um, uh, undergoes the gravitational collapse to form a black hole, and the later, the lighter star expands due to the uh, helium core burning, and the system is surrounded by the gas. And uh, due to the gas friction, the two, uh, two objects uh, come closer, and the gas uh, dissipates, and uh, then the uh, second, uh, this, uh, a lighter star collapses to a black hole and the system ends up ends up with a uh, black hole binary and uh, finally uh, they, they merge at the present time in the dynamical this is another scenario which is called a dynamical scenario in this scenario black holes were born individually 
and the, then the black holes form a binary by gravitational interaction in dense environments such as globular cluster and uh, galactic nuclei. And uh, there are a couple of uh, uh, processes to form the uh, black hole binaries, like a single single capture, two body merger, three body merger, ejected merger. Okay, so this is a so-called dynamical scenario. And finally, the, the more exo exotic but more exciting scenario is the so-called primordial black hole scenario. The primordial black hole is a black hole that, that is not produced by the gravitational crux of the normal uh, massive star. Instead, the primordial black hole is a black hole which were formed in the very, very early universe. And uh, the primordial black hole is formed from the horizon sized over dense region, which uh, directly crosses to a black hole. And uh, the mass of the primordial black hole is basically approximately equal to the horizon mass at the time of the formation. And for instance, the tensile mass primordial black hole is formed when the age of the universe is, is about uh, uh, 0.1 millisecond right after the Big Bang. So you see that the, indeed the stellar mass primordial black holes are formed in the very early universe. And uh, when the primordial black holes are formed, uh, right after they are formed, they are, the primordial black holes are distributed uh, randomly in space. And the later time, uh, some primordial black holes, which are accidentally uh, closer, form binaries in the radiation dominated era, and they merge at the present time. Uh, some of them march at the present time. Okay, so there are several uh, theoretical models to explain the origin of the black hole binaries and their mergers. So then the natural question we next ask is this, how can we determine how much each channel contributes? And this is not easy to address uh, directly because uh, there are uh, theoretical uncertainties in each scenario and also the data size is limited. So in order to directly address uh, this question, I change, change uh, this, the question into more specific question that is more tractable. So the question is, is it possible to clarify if the mass distribution of the black hole binaries evolves or not? And in the next uh, few slides, I'm going to explain why I have, uh, I changed into this question. So in order to that, uh, let me inter first introduce the notion of the merger rate density, which is central in, in, my, in my talk. So here, the, this uh, uh, picture shows the black hole mergers. And the uh, M1 is the mass of the black hole, and the M2 is the mass of the, uh, the other black hole. And uh, they merge at the cosmic time t. And uh, the, at the time of the merger, the system emits uh, gravitational waves and uh, they reach at the, uh, at the observer. And from the, observe, from the data analysis of the gravitational waveform, we can get M1, M2, and T. So for each merger event, we can obtain three uh, quantities. In principle, in principle, we can also get the black hole spin from the observations, but in my talk, we, I ignore black hole spin. So M1, M2, T are the observable for each uh, major event. And if we can determine, uh, if we detect, can detect infinite number of events, then this will give us the distrib distribution function of M1, M2, T. This is the merger rate of density which is denoted by R of M1, M2, T. So this merger rate density is a continuous function. Now, I want to consider the time evolution of the mass distribution of the merger rate density because of, the, because of this, the following reason. So the, 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 whether the mass distribution of the merger rate density evolves or not depends on the formation scenario. For instance, in the field binary scenario, it is known that the mass distribution of the merger rate density evolves in general. In the dynamical uh, scenario, the situation is a bit more complicated. For instance, in the globular, 
if the dominant mergers occur inside the global clusters, then the mass distribution evolves or does not evolve depending on where the uh, dominant mergers take place. If the dominant mergers take place in the galactic nuclei, then the mass distribution does not evolve. In the primordial black hole scenario, it is known that the mass distribution does not evolve. So these uh, examples uh, show that uh, in some channels, the mass distribution does not evolve. So clarifying if the mass distribution evolves or not uh, gives some clue about the origin of the black hole binaries. And this is the reason why I focus on the time evolution of the mass distribution of the merger rate, rate density. So now I want to uh, translate the time independent time independence of the mass distribution into more mathematical expression. And uh, this is the answer. So the merger rate of density is equal to R0, which is constant, times H of M1, M2 times F of T. Here, H of M1, M2 it represents the mass distribution, which is normalized by uh, this condition. And the F of T represents the time evolution of the merger rate which is normalized by this condition. If the moderator takes uh, this form, then we can, easily under, we can easily see that for any fixed T, the mass distribution is just given by this part, H function. And uh, this doesn't contain time T. So the mass distribution of the moderator density is always given by this function, which is independent of time. So in other words, the, that the mass distribution does not evolve is equivalent to the separable form of the merger rate of density given by this uh, expression. Okay, so this is a mathematical expression for the mass independent, uh, uh, mass, dis uh, mass, independent uh, mass distribution. Okay, so let me summarize what I have stated so far. So if the merger rate, merger rate density takes this separable form, then this means that some single channel dominates over the observed merger events. But no, notice that the opposite is not necessar necessarily true. Some single, uh, some single channel uh, predicts a very complicated uh, shapes of, of shape of the merger rate density. So the opposite is not uh, always true. But anyway, so this is the, uh, this is what I mean by the time independence of the uh, merger rate density. And I want to test if the observed merger events obey this distribution function or not. And if the, if we have the, if we know the Major rate perfectly know the major rate density as a continuous function, the answer is easy. But uh, in reality, we only have a finite size data, and in, in addition to that, we don't have a robust theoretical uh, template for the major rate density in a priori. So it's not easy to, it's, it's not trivial to, uh, to test if the observed major events obey this distribution function or not. And in my recent paper, we formulate, we formulated the method and demonstrate it that it works for large uh, data size. Okay. And let and me let now, now uh, explain the, the uh, formulation, uh, formulation of the method. The method. So, so I first uh, change, uh, perform the change of variables, variables from, from M1 and T to Total, total mass, mass capital, capital M, M, and, and the mass, mass ratio Q, Q and the ratio C. C. And this and is not uh, uh, just for convenience, and it's, it's not essential, essential at all. And then, and then we, we divide, divide the two dimensional param parameter, parameter space, space capital M, M and Q, into, into two, two regions, regions which, which I call region one and region two. And the shape of the region two and the two, one and the two is at your disposal. It's arbitrary. it's arbitrary. And, and then, then we, we divide the redshift red axis into two, two, two segments, segments from, from ZA, ZA to, to ZB, ZB and, and from, from ZB to ZC. ZC. So by, so by doing, doing this, this, we end up with, with uh, four, four regions. regions. 
to the R denoted by 1L, 1H, 2L, and 2H. Okay, so this is a setup. Then we assume the separable angles for the major right density, like this. For this major right density, then the expected merger yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry, expected, expected number, number of events, of events in the re region 1L one one during the observation time, time T can be, can be written, written in, in this form. form. And, and uh, 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 we can see that the, the time-dependent time part, part and the mass-dependent mass part, part are decoupled. decoupled. So, so if, if I take the ratio of the N1H to NAL, where A is either 1 or 2, then, then we get, we get uh, this, uh, this expression. expression. And uh, uh, you can you see can that see the mass-dependent mass part uh, 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 goes, goes away. away. So, so we, the, the conclusion, conclusion is that, that if the moderate, moderate density, density, density takes a separable form, form, then R1 becomes, becomes equal to R2. R2. Okay, so this is a basic starting point of my analysis. So now, so now I want, I want to, to apply, apply if the if this relation R1 is equal, equal to R2 is realized, realized in the uh, real data, data or not. Or not. So, I so I want to, to I'm, 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 I'm going to apply the formulation, the formulation to finite size, size data. data. And, for and for this purpose, I take the approach of the so-called so hypothesis testing, testing which consists of a tube hypothesis. The first is the so-called null hypothesis. Which, which I want, I want to test. test. I, want I want to test, test if the, the, uh, uh, the moderate uh, density uh, is, uh, uh, the mass the distribution, distribution is independent, or, or, is independent of time. time. So, so my, my null hypothesis, hypothesis is, is P1, P1 is equal to P2. P2. Here, Here, PA is, is defined by, by uh, this, relation. this relation. This is this just for convenience. And the alternative hypothesis is the opposite to the null hypothesis. So, so P1, P1 is not, is not uh, equal, equal to P2. P2. So, so now, now I assume that I have a data, data and the, 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 the number, number of the major events, events of data in which region, region are denoted by uh, small, small n. n. Now, now I, I define, define the quantity P A bar by, by this equation, by this, this relation. relation. And, and after, after some, some uh, simple algebra, algebra you find that the, the, this quantity obeys the normal distribution, distribution where, where the first argument is the mean of the normal, normal distribution, distribution and the, and the second, second argument, argument is the variance. variance. From, From this, this, we find, we find that, that the, if the, the null hypothesis is true, is true then, then the, the t statistic, which, which is defined by, by this uh, uh, relation, relation Obeys, obeys the normal the distribution, distribution of, of zero, zero mean, mean and, and uh, uh, one variance. variance. So, so that, 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 in, in other words, words, if the, the null hypothesis, hypothesis is true, true then, then this quantity typically takes the amplitude, amplitude of order one, one, and it's very, very unlikely, unlikely to have the value, the value which, which, is, which significantly deviates deviate from, from one. one. So this, so this is, is a basic, basic uh, idea, idea of the, the uh, hypothesis, hypothesis testing. testing. And, uh, and uh, precisely, precisely speaking, uh, we, uh, we can or cannot, cannot reject, reject the, the new hypothesis, hypothesis at the significance, significance level, level alpha by computing whether T stat is larger or smaller than, than uh, this function, where ERAC is the complementary error function. Okay, so this is the basic idea of the data analysis. Now, now uh, having, having explained, explained the uh, formulation of, the, of my, my method, method I, I, I now uh, dem want, dem to want to demonstrate, demonstrate that, that the formulation, formulation works. Uh, works. works. And for this, so I take the region one, one to, to be the to be one, the one where, where the total, total mass is smaller, smaller than, than some, some critical mass. mass. And the and region the two is the region where, where the total mass is greater than this. So this is the the region uh, one and region two, two I, I want, want to, to use. use. Now, now I first consider the, 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 the first, first case, case I consider is the case where the mass distribution, distribution does not evolve. 
and the high tech are two examples. The one is the primordial black hole modules, and the other is the astrophysical black hole modules. And uh, uh, I take the, the, the phenomenological uh, mass, mass distribution, distribution, which is quite widely, widely used in the literature, in the literature both, both for the, the primordial black clouds and the astrophysical black clouds. And, and I assume that, that uh, uh, so based on this uh, 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 major rate density, density, I randomly generate the uh, uh, merger events, events, and uh, 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 the sample, sample size is 1,000. Now, now, the uh, red Red circles, red circles are the, are the distribution, distribution of, of T-stat of the mock data. data. And the and blue, blue circles, circles are the normal, the normal distribution. distribution. And this, and this is, is for the primordial black holes, and this is for the uh, astrophysical black, black holes. And you and see that the distribution of the T-stat is consistent with the normal distribution. Next, Next item is that the case where the, where the mass, mass distribution, distribution evolves, in, evolves, evolves in, time. in time. And this and is achieved by, by uh, considering, considering the mixture of the, of the astrophysical, astrophysical black holes and the primordial black holes. Then, then I, I again, again based, based on, on this uh, merger rate density, density, I randomly generate the merger events with the same same sample size. And the red circles are the distribution of T stat of the mock data, data and the blue circles are the, the represents the normal distribution, distribution and, and you clearly see the deviation, deviation from the normal, normal distribution. distribution. And, and since in this case, case we, since we also, also have the analytic uh, expression, expression for the major density, density, we can, we can analytically estimate the uh, mean value of the t stat for this uh, 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 distribution. distribution. And this and is an uh, expression. expression. So, so when, when the, the sample size, size is 1,000, central value of T stat is, is around 1.3, which is consistent with the uh, uh, numerical, numerical simulation. simulation. So, so these, these examples, examples uh, demonstrations, uh, demonstrations uh, show that the our formulation works. works. Now, now as, as I said at the beginning of my talk, talk uh, we already have about 100 merger events. Oh, oh, that is, that we, is we have the real, real data. data. So, so it's, it's natural, natural to think, think of applying our foundation to the existing data. data. But, but when, when we apply, we apply to the real, real data, data, there's, there's one, one thing, thing we should, we should uh, be, be careful. careful. So that's, so that's uh, so-called so -called the detection, detection bias. bias. And uh, uh, this is called because the detectors are not equally sensitive to any merger events. Some merger events cannot be detected by the detectors. So this so is, uh, is uh, which is, which is uh, represented, represented by the P detect, uh, P detect. This is this the is detection, the detection probability. probability. So the so observable major rate density, density is given by the detection, detection probability times the uh, intrinsic major rate density. And the, this P detect detection probability depends on which detector you are considering. And in general, the, the, this, this is a complicated function of mass and time. And the Sorry, bias uh, four minutes. Size, that, that, I, that, 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 that can be used for our purpose. Our purpose. And, the and the criterion of the selection, of the selection can be stated like, like this. this. For, for large sample size n, the, the true number, number of events will be n divided by, by a detection probability, probability with, with its uncertainty, uncertainty given by this. this. And if and this uncertainty is greater than the greater than the Poisson fluctuation of the expected number of the true sample size, which is given by this, then our method becomes ineffective. So the so the the former should be smaller than the latter if the condition that the detection probability should be greater than 0.5. So in so other, in other words, words, out of the 100 uh, merge events, events, we have, we have to pick, pick up the events, events only, only the events, events which have a detection probability greater than 0.5. So, so we, we apply the this criterion to the uh, real data, data, and the number of events, events that satisfy the criterion is at most seven, which is clearly uh, not uh, large enough to do the statistical test. So my so conclusion my is that uh, we need upgraded upgrade observations to clarify if the mass distribution evolves one not by using our method. method. So, so let, let me summarize. summarize. The, the origin of the, the black, black binary is not known. known. 
and uh, my point is that the uh, time, the time dependence of the mass distribution of the modular density, density gives us hints on the nature of the black and binaries, and we formulated a statistical method to test to test the, this uh, hypothesis. And we find that the current data is still small to apply our method to and draw meaningful conclusion. But in the future, we will be able to see if the modular uh, uh, mass distribution evolves or not. Yeah, yeah. So let so me let finish, finish my, my talk. talk. <laughs>